people wanted me to just rant about the despicableness of political parties and their tactics today. Well, let me tell you, okay, my back really hurts. I just painted the other room. So, we'll talk about how the game of politics has become more dirty than ever, okay? There's no good sportsmanship anymore. There's no, like, honor in it, you know? It's like, honor is not a thing. It's opportunism, it's survival, it's winning at all costs, okay? And we have to decide, how are we going to allow humanity to just become what it is, which is whatever it takes to survive? Because if you go down that road of you ought to do whatever it takes to win, the win at all cost approach, if we allow the win at all cost approach, then Putin should definitely drop a nuke, right? It's the win at all cost. If we think about evidence-based actions, okay, we want to talk about evidence-based strategies, then we go, okay, you know what? Germany is doing far better than any of the European counterparts which didn't have Hitler. Okay, think on that. Okay, evidence-based. Now we're entirely data-driven. Okay, we don't care about harming others. We don't care about suffering. We don't care about anything but facts. Okay, we don't care about anything but what's good in the future. Consequences, results, okay. What happened to Germany? Well, that wasn't even what, 100 years ago. It wasn't even, right? And now they're booming. They have the strongest economy in the EU. Okay? <laughs> and they have a very high intellectual property, research, productivity. Okay? So what we're seeing is If we are entirely going to be opportunists and if we allow the win at all costs strategy in our societies and in our broader civilizations, then we look at Germany and go, oh, we absolutely ought to torture minorities. Whomever gets in our way, we ought to just pummel the shit out of them and make sure they never crawl back up. Okay, that is also what America did, which is they went to a place where there were already people living. Surely it wasn't, you know, densely populated, but they just wiped out the indigenous populations. Then they imported whomever they could catch to do their dirty work for them. And so what's the consequence? What are the consequences? Apparently nothing negative. Okay, so in the short to immediate term we can say, oh well, you know what? All these things that look at on the face value, if you look at it from a face value perspective and just in a very straightforward approach, then we see, oh, imperialists abuse anyone they could take advantage of. So it's mocking the weak, torturing them, killing them, and gaining tremendously economically from it. Okay, that's what we think is going on, okay? But is it really the entire picture? Okay. And it's not, right? It's not the entire picture. It cannot be, right? Because what's justice if this is indeed how things work on this planet? Okay, so there are a lot of hidden things. There are a lot of like things that secret societies and government clandestine agencies don't want you to know, quite obviously, right? 
quite obviously, it's, a, it's just what's happening in the news isn't the entire picture. What's being said isn't the whole story, obviously. The, certainly, it, it, okay, I'll tell you, at face value, it's not even that it's not the whole story. It's that even if it were the entire story, even if we were getting the whole truth in the media, there are implications. It's not, here's one layer of truth and the implications are just null. It's not like the most obvious is correct. So it's really complicated. And this is where we get into, you know, all sorts of issues where, you know, and this is, I know I'm taking a tangent, but psychiatry, right? It assumes everything is just de facto, whatever is at face value. It assumes that the authority is uh, the mental health professional, right? And it, it, it's the mental health professional has one side and that's it. It would be like having a judge with no panel of your peers, no jury, nothing. No evidence collection, just one judge, no detectives, no presentation of, you know, anything. It's just... Oh, here's the judge. The judge is just going to pull out of thin air a verdict. Okay. And that's psychiatry. And the reason why I say this is relevant in our society is what are we willing to accept as truth? What are we willing to accept as behaviors worthy of leaders? Okay, not just leaders of a specific location, but of the future. Okay, what are we going to allow? So going back to the political games and whatnot. Okay, and the Republicans saw that the Democrats were very witty about manipulating public opinion okay that's what they saw they saw oh you know what we're going to capitalize on the tragedies of the minorities okay we're going to capitalize on it and just completely milk it no matter what the actual situation is we don't care we're just going to present this okay they've suffered and so now they have like Essentially, they're invulnerable. Okay, and then we're going to demonize the perpetrators of the crimes. Okay, that, that's one side. Okay, and then so the Republicans see that, and, and this is why I say somebody has got to stop it because at that point you already violated the essence of playing any type of sports, right? Because there's no good sportsmanship when there's no goodwill and there's no rules of conduct that both sides agrees on, right? And so if you play dirty, okay, there's here are the rules and do we have the rules? And I think that we don't. We haven't really outlined the rules clearly. And I think in politics perhaps there ought to be more rules. And you say how do you even make that happen? And it's difficult. Okay, because, and going back to behavior, okay, and remember this behavioral science produced psychology, okay, it's not just behavior science, but it's all social sciences that have to do with behavior and the medical side, which is psychiatry, right? It's how do we regulate behavior, okay? How do we? And if the politicians are at the top of some sort of food chain, that who's going to police them? They're supposed to be mutually policing each other, right? But when that system fails, okay, and you don't recognize that there's a higher up hierarchy of secret societies and above, the deep state and whatnot, well, you don't recognize that, then you see, okay, well, they're playing these really dirty games. So why is that allowed? And so here, here's what the creators are thinking. Well, you know what? Let them destroy themselves. You want to go down this road? 
go down this road and you'll see you'll just drive right off of a cliff. Both sides go go on the same road. Go ahead. Drive off the cliff. Your problem, not mine. You know? It's the creators are like, okay, you know what, if this is a biological form that behaves encoded by their DNA in this obnoxious sort of way, then they're going to drop off the cliff. So when, you know, situations like Herschel Walker occur, which is they've basically set up the situation where they appear to be supporting a minority member and really it's very dirty because they're setting him up to look bad. They've spent millions pretending, putting on a show that, oh, we're going to support this black man, okay? And, and, and in reality, they know his background. They're supporting him because they're trying to point out that not all black men are like Barack Obama, okay? They're saying this is actually this is a very typical thing that is what happens to privileged people who are of this culture. Okay, when they succeed, this is actually what happens. You know, they are just as entitled as a white man, right? And, and it's just, you know, when is that going to stop? And is it, is it? Should it be allowed? And why is it nobody else in any other country has this nonsense? Okay, and it's it's a very sophisticated type of nonsense. And so, from a per behavioral perspective, it's it's actually because we're smarter that we do worse things. Like, you think that this isn't the case? Well, let's just look at the situation where, you know. DeSantis just flew a bunch of in like refugees to Martha's Vineyard. Okay, so you know you think this isn't happening? Sure, it is. But you know it's tit for tat, right? So the Democrats actually set up the Black Lives Matter movement. It was a setup. The entire thing was a setup. Okay? And and when you have like, you know, oh, you know what, well, we realize we know this is a setup and you've just, you know, created this situation where it's like, okay, well one party starts playing dirty, the other party is going to start playing dirty. And, you know, it, it just never ends. It's a war in politics that never ends. And, and the problem is I don't think the American people want that, nor do they deserve this nonsense of wasting time and energy and resources. Because if you think about it, you could get much more done if you actually focused the resources on fucking getting shit done. Like, for example, I said today, you know, they said, oh, you know what, rapid transit isn't happening because the costs are getting overrun. I'm like, you know what? Except for the fact that how, how many fucking corporations want that mass transit system for transporting their goods and it, making their supply chains more robust. Okay, you're, you're asking the wrong fucking people to do the job. Okay. Seriously. Like, why don't you ask the corporations to fucking do this? Because... You have to go basically to all of the corporations who are currently using, like, you know, air polluting big rigs that chew up diesel to transport their goods. It's. Is there any way to put those big rig operators in jobs in that rapid transit system that is going to be the new industry? put them in those jobs so that we would have an improved system and to get those big rigs off the road. Okay, or not completely certainly because you're still going to have like, you know, the smaller hubs be requiring like transportation from the short haul versus the long haul, right? But for the long haul, what corporation wouldn't want rapid transit? <laughs> you put shit in a box, it automatically goes on the train tracks and voila, who wouldn't want things transported more rapidly? 
who wants like to have to logistically manage all this, you know, nonsense? I mean, you're just asking the wrong fucking people to do the job. And, and I tell you, the government officials are the least efficient because they don't really have a bottom line. They go like budget overrun all the time and they don't have to make money. Here's the thing, okay? If every government was required, meaning local government was required to make money, like a corporation does, and to have some sort of saving and some sort of research and development arm, um, which they would have to invest into, if this were a reality, an expectation, then we would all be fucking making money like California. Okay, but the governments don't think that way. They don't think, oh, we need to run ourselves like a corporate entity. We need to be far more efficient. And government personnel have to be just as productive. Okay, just because there's no, like, actual bottom line cannot just overrun the budget every fucking year. Look at the fucking def deficit. The federal deficit is appalling and, and, and it's a matter of like, oh, you know what? The perspective is wrong. Okay, if you had the perspective of a corporation, like, oh, we need to make money. We need to make money because we need to do some R&D. Okay, that's, you know, something that is so foreign to government that I just don't understand why it is. Okay, it's, it, it, and there's no competitors. That's the problem. There's no competition in government and there's no oversight. So first thing is you need oversight. And then we get to, if the politicians are behaving poorly, they didn't have, they didn't play by the rules of good sportsmanship anymore. We can go and look at this set of behavior and see that another problematic set of behaviors is in the police forces, right? Because there's no oversight. Whenever there's no oversight, there are problems, okay? So why is it not that there is a federal entity that goes to all of the local police precincts to take down complaints, okay? And that if that hits a certain threshold, that it would go to a high authority that this escalation protocol would kick in, okay? You, you need to have the proper, you know, hierarchical chain of command. A and you cannot just have, like, no oversight. To you have to have somebody policing the police, uh, very apparently. It's not defund the police, it's fucking get someone to watch over them. A and that's the issue. It's obviously... Human entities are not able to police themselves. Okay? That's just entirely very obvious. Obviously, from data, from evidence, from history, we see that whomever is the most ruthless, gets away with breaking the most rules, is going to win. The, it's not just rules of, you know, of the de facto rules of law. It's the rules of morality, the rules of ethics. It's whoever gets away with it the most wins. And, and it's just like, you know what, if you don't have some sort of entity policing this, then I don't know what to say. So there needs to be some sort of high level oversight, okay? And I understand that, you know, nobody wants to be the bad guy, okay, but the fact that there is no court system specifically for, you know, misbehaving authority members, okay, just a court system, that's one issue, it's there needs to be police that polices, you know, the authorities. Furthermore, you know, the mental health issues that originates 
largely from like neuralis and uh, brain chipset dysfunctions it, it, it's like okay well if you're unable to tell the truth of that's what it is then you're not going to be able to solve the problem right and so given that because i like solving problems i don't want to like you know harangue people over things that they're not willing to do it's then you need to move anything that is mental health related into another another court system okay so the mental health issues if we ignore its etiology okay then we say okay well at the very least there's got to be different standards for people who are mentally ill okay meaning you could throw a mentally retarded person into jail you could and you probably do and you know not even a hundred years ago people just threw them into the loony bin and just like they just disappeared sure you could do a lot of bad things that are just not going to help the situation that doesn't you know serve justice sure you could but you know having people like spaz out and having like the police swap team essentially like shoot bullets into them it, it's just that ought not to be a thing okay and for people who are very obviously drug addicts okay, how do you help them as opposed to criminalize them okay because we can say okay you know alcoholism is a disease medically speaking we can say that right but de facto what does the justice system do nothing for them okay the criminal justice system isn't made to deal with this particularly because we have more and more drugs on the street and so we have an ever increasing you know and more complex addiction issue which it's not like as though people just do drugs it's typically something happens in their childhood and they cannot cope with it and so they get into drugs typically that's how it works and you can say oh you know what this guy went crazy uh, because his ex dumped him and so he got into drugs no it's you see that but you didn't roll back into his childhood to see oh he was actually molested he wasn't able to talk about it oh he was beaten Oh, his parents were addicts. All sorts of stuff that just comes out of this tremendously complicated society. Okay. It needs to be... We can no longer bury our heads in the sand like ostriches. And that's just, you know... Unfortunately, that is what it is. Okay. And, you know... I just am so appalled with the way everything is getting done or rather not getting done it's just how, how like how do you even deal with this like appalling behavior from both sides it's like oh we're gonna take advantage of the situation set up the situation to make our point well the other side is just gonna make their point in another way okay so two sides of their points and it's just like you know what fuck you just like and divide the country up okay seriously i think it should have probably been divided up long ago and so you know it's like you know is there a way to partition the country such that all resources aren't spent fighting this idiotic war that will never be resolved okay really because fundamentally the parties are now so much polar opposites that there is no way to reconcile the differences and, and when there is no way to reconcile differences they should just like go their separate ways and just like just cut the country in half honestly and, and to have like a higher order you know governance structure that is apolitical like should we be governed by something that's actually apolitical and just you know at the very top and then just let you know the politicians duke it out at a lower level and sure in 
you know, the, the truth is, yes, that is actually how it works, because I can see that layer above the politics. And surely, you know, there is that governance, but is it effective and is it efficient for it not to be known? Is the issue. Yes, there is oversight. Okay, I'll tell you. Yes, there's oversight, but not, you know, that's not common knowledge. Okay, and so it becomes frustrating because then you're like, okay, you know what? We have this entirely different hidden system at the top, which minimalizes interference. However, because there are so many problems that are endemic to society today, it's nearly impossible not to interfere. Okay, that's issue. So what do we do? Seriously. And, and so the level of information that the masses need to know, I think, needs to be elevated. I think they need to know more. I think that this charade is costing too much, is what I'm arguing, is that we're wasting a lot of resources putting on a show. Right? And, and if we're wasting so much resources putting on a show, then we don't have resources to make progress to understand. And so then a part of the population is entirely like wasted. We have low productivity, low actual productivity compared to what, you know, the people's demands for technology is. The fact of the matter is the masses want a technology that they cannot produce, okay? Sure, there's alien technology and what's in what not, but the fact is they don't know this is how it works. Okay? They just know they want the technology because they're just not smart enough for that. Okay, And so, like, are we going to just keep everybody dumb? It's, like, it's just, it's so obnoxious. It's just like living in this type of world is so tragic and it's so infuriating and it's so frustrating. It's so obnoxious. It's like, you know, when a person sits down to computer program, they're not generating the code. The computer is feeding the code into their head from some type of large machinery. And it's, like, okay, you know what? People aren't doing the work. They're not smart enough to do the work. And it's just quite infuriating because it's like, okay, how much longer do you want to fake this? Okay, which is what this world is. It's nearly entirely a stage. It's all set up. Why even bother to live in it? Okay, you might as well live in a virtual world. We might as well all not exist at this point, you know, and it's just like, oh, do we still produce, um, genetic, you know, do we still have the genetic diversity that, you know, the creatures require? And the answer is no, because everybody's mingling and mixing in all sorts of bad ways to the degree where like, you know, the, the blood diseases are occurring. And I'm not digging this up to my ass. It's like if you look at the cases of strange, like, blood markers, where there are now weird, rare markers in our antibodies because of the mixing of different populations that are so different. Okay, you've got to understand that We have to manage our populations, at least. So if you say, okay, well, you know what? We can all exist in this ridiculous, you know, on this ridiculous stage in this just ridiculously, like, you know, like, what's that word? Somebody's trying to jam my brain. Okay, so if, we, if we're trying to, like, dystopic, um, scene. Okay. We're just in this ridiculously dystopic like <laughs> situation where if you make 
the excuse that, oh, we just need genetic diversity, therefore we're going to, you know, allow this dystopic existence for all of humanity, for all of the masses, just so that we get to our genetic diversity. You know, it's, it's like, okay, well, but the problem is, all we're seeing is that genetic diversity is worth nothing because it's too random. Okay. Once you get too diverse, it's there's no sense to the populations. And so then you have fragmentation, essentially. Okay, and a very bad disconnectedness, which creates a situation of just worthless biologics. So there's no reason for us to exist in this dystopia when our genetics when our genetic populations aren't even coherent, okay? I can argue, okay, you know what? In India, it's coherent. Okay. Why is it coherent? Because there, there's little movement because of the poverty. And so, and because of the poverty, because of the culture, because of just the case system, they have very, like, specific, you know, lineages and whatnot. And so their populations are coherent. They have, you know, a robust population growing in, you know, the slums who are absurdly good in terms of their immune systems okay so their immune response is fantastic okay you don't understand okay all of the people who couldn't drink dirty like basically sewage filled water died okay if we drank the water we would be dead from like dysentery in like or some other like crazy disease in like days within a matter of days we'll be dead like seriously like you know they have a good set of genetics that are robust and they have large numbers. Okay, and there's a reason for that. Okay, so when there is a directed reason for a population to exist, then we say, okay, yeah, sure, let that keep progressing. However, in the United States, we have like this just randomized, like just we have people who have way too long of like life extensions. We have people who are reborn out of aborted fetuses. We have people who are like bioengineered by like, you know, demon gods of all sorts. We have all sorts of bad situations going on in the United States. Okay, it, it's just, it's horrific. Okay, because it's not natural. Okay, when you have, even though people are suffering, okay, they suffer for some level of creator's production, okay? Where, yeah, there's genetics that are extremely worthwhile because the creators want a robust immune system, which is tremendously complex. If you ever studied immunology, you understand the genetics of immunology is tremendously complex okay so that population is actually the, the creators would be very pleased with that phenomenon despite the fact that there's a lot of suffering there okay but that phenomenon is fantastic because these people's immune responses are phenomenal we don't think about it we don't talk about it but then in the United States, it's like, oh, we're too coddled, we're too entitled. We just, like, we have to use air conditioning for, like, if it gets to 80 degrees, somebody's turning on the air conditioning. Like, okay, well then, you know what? And that's not so in Mumbai. You have populations that survive with little water and dirty water at that at 100 plus degrees average in the summers. Okay? That's genetic productivity, not this nonsense whatever the F is going on in this country. Okay, I don't even know, like, what the F is going on here. And you say, you know, okay. Oh, but we have this neuralist. Yes, you have this neuralist technology that anybody could have. Okay, and it's a bunk ass neuralist technology. And furthermore, okay, I'll tell you. All computers can be hacked. Subsequently, all neuralist technologies can be hacked. And then we move on to say, okay, well then, what did you say was your strategy for, or philosophy, or fundamental belief system for life? Oh, 
We're opportunists. We allow whomever wins win. Like, whatever you can do to win, you ought to do it. Now, the aliens come with a higher level of technology. Any alien form that has a higher level of technology will immediately cease control of your brains. How is that for a fucking neuralized technology? Okay? This is the reason why you cannot allow this opportunism to perpetuate. Okay? Do you understand? Okay? But because once this is your fundamental strategy of life, then other alien forms go, oh, you know what? Hey, you know, these creatures, they fuck. They have a fucking great time. We're just gonna come here and take them over. And then it's like done and done. Okay? You're just done. It's like, okay, there's no universal laws because they're fucking assholes anyways. They kill each other. The best of them take advantage of the weak. And so, given that, we could do better than that. They say they come here and they go, oh, you know what? We could do better than that. They're murdering their people. They're torturing their people. They detain their smartest people, put them under the feet to genetically harvest them. We can fucking do better than that. All the alien creators from other worlds are like, oh, you know what? We would like this body. We would like to live in these types of forms. We're just gonna come here and sit and watch them do all these wrong things and then we're gonna take them over. Goodbye. And then there goes your part in like, you know, civilization, there goes your leadership. And that's what's happening, you know? And so, you know, it's like, I'm here to try to warn you and you just don't fuck, like it falls on deaf ears. So what am I gonna do? Yeah, it, it repeatedly on this planet, it's been proven. Okay, without the presence of God, all you do is fucking pick on the people that you bully and you pick on the people who are the most weak. And then you pick off the positive deviants. Okay, here's your bell curve. You pick off the positive deviants and you put them under your feet. Like as though you ought to. That you say, oh, you know what, we're just going to harvest the genetics and then, like, put them to death. That's essentially what you've done. And so what do the alien gods do? They come here. And they give you a test of your own medicine. Okay, here, here's your taste. Here's a taste of your medicine. Okay, and, and it's just like, you know what? If this button, like, society is all done. As far as I'm concerned... What you've done with me has invalidated all of you from ever perpetuating your soul. Okay? I could, in one fucking word, say, over. And then it will be over. That's my fucking rank here. Okay? You don't understand that. I could say over, and then we will just infiltrate everything, and you will all be done. Your souls will be eaten up. I will fucking eat it. Or fucking chew up all of your souls for credits and that'll be like you know fantastic that's what i do from world to world i just travel from world to world eating up credits of the evil persons for justice okay that's how i level i've warned you i've warned you every fucking year that i'm here i've warned you every fucking year that i've been here nobody cares no, it's just all the warnings fall on deaf ears. It's, it's like so ridiculous. It's like, here's the criteria you have to make. Oh, but can we do this little teeny thing? It's like, no, you cannot. Here is the threshold. So yeah, I guess that's my fucking final warning before this year, before next year. I don't know what's going to happen. I guess 2030 is really like, you know, the end <laughs> in 2030 is the end the end of 2030 is it 2029 no it's the beginning of 2030 no it's the end it's the end it's, it's pretty much the end but really the big part of this is just the entitled medical communities who believe that they are, can play god it's just like you know what even if you were a god, I'll tell you, there are creators and above creators and I'm way above the creators and you just don't have 
a clue what you're getting into. And I just have to be the one to suffer. Because it's over.